actually switch to English again. Uh, and I welcome Kaisa Hartig, who is head of collections and cultural environments at Westerndalens Museum in Sweden, and Elisabeth Bok, uh, who is curator of photography collections at the Stockholm County Museum. And you're going to talk about collecting the ephemeral social digital photograph for the future. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm Kaisa Hatting. I'm sharing my time between the Nordic Museum and Western Norlands Museum. And today I'm representing the Nordic Museum. And why we have chosen to speak in English is because we have international guests, but also because our project language is English. Yes, the Collecting Social Photo uh, project is a three-year-long Nordic project researching how museums and archives can change how we work with photography collections in the age of social media. And we are aiming to develop practical methods for collecting social media photography. And the partners are um, the Nordic Museum, the Stockholm County Museum, the Finnish Museum of Photography, the Aalborg City Archive, and the Department of Social Anthropology, and the Department of Culture and Aesthetics at Stockholm University. And we also have an advisory board with Nordic researchers and also researchers from the UK. And we are funded by the Riksbankens Jubileumsfond, and this is our third year, and uh, the project ends in the spring of 2020. And in the project, we have made a series of case studies to gain the empirical knowledge about collecting methods, but also about personal practices of people taking and sharing photographs on, online. Um, and we will not focus on these case st studies here today, but rather talk about some insights and recommendations from, from our studies. But first, I want to jump into the future. So let's imagine it's 30 years, 30 years into the future, and nearly 50 years have passed since the last analog photo was exposed and developed. We still have a trickling stream of analog photos reaching the museum but it's getting less and less. And soon, the very last analog photo will be catalogued in the museum da database. And now, the search begins for digital-born photos. And yes, we will be able to find some from, from the millennium and from the following decade. In the best case scenario, the photographer has succeeded in conversion and migration, and the photos made it into the future. But then something quite radical happened. Two major events changed photography as we know it. And the first is the launch of the iPhone in 2007, because now the mobile phone is also a camera, or rather, the camera also functions as a phone. And this co coincides with the second uh, event, the development of social media. Facebook turns up in 2006, and in 2010 we have Instagram. And this changes how we take pictures, when we take pictures, and what we do with them. And this also has an impact on museums and archives. Because when people no longer use dedicated cameras, and when, and when the photos are automatically stored in personal cloud services, they become inaccessible for museums and archives. And also risking oblivion when the account holder dies, eventually. And the same goes for photos shared on social media. They might be there in the future, but locked up on big servers. And the social media platform itself might have gone out of business, of course. And in both ca cases, they are inaccessible for us. Especially should we, as our habit usually is, wait another 50 years before we begin to collect. Because if they exist at this time, they, um, 
as they also risk being deleted or lost on crashed mobile phones or hard drives. And we have seen recent examples of this, um, of dig digital-born material being deleted by social media platforms, or they have simply just lost it. For example, Flickr's new owner decided uh, recently to delete photos unless the account holder chooses to change to a pro account. And Google Plus decided to shut down its co consumer branch. But both services did give ample of time for their users to download and save their own content. MySpace, on the other hand, they claim that they have lost all data uploaded before 2016 due to a failed migration. So all music created and shared that hasn't been backed up by the, the user is lost forever. Um, and some even say that we are entering or living in a digital dark age. For us, the bottom line is that there will be no shoeboxes of grandpa's old photos for us to collect in the future. And the same notion goes for diaries and personal letters. And the social media companies themselves are under no obligations to save our memories for eternity. So therefore, we have to adapt our work methods and start to collect in real time and in collaboration with the photographers. But then you might ask, how has photography changed? Well, to some extent, it does r remain the same because we still take pictures of b birthdays and summer vacations. But a major difference from analog photography is the massive increase in participation and the number of images shared every day. And the readily available cameras in the form of mobile phones is shaping how we see our, our work world and has led to people thinking visually to a higher extent than ever before. And the social digital photographs are used in telling stories, sharing values and expressing culture online. So the network social digital fo photograph is dependent of its context, being an assemblage of the motif, of the geodata, the text, emojis, likes, shares, and of course, the so social ne network itself. So social photography today can first and foremost be regarded as a form of communication, where the visual resembles words and language. And it is ephemeral regarding the changing practices, um, but also because they, they risk being de deleted or locked into these cloud ser services. Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, as Elisabeth has explained, the social digital photograph has changed and so have our habits around taking photographs. The urgency of collecting requires museums and archives to step up and get ready to collect here and now. The urgency is caused by the changing character of the photographs, the social media channels and the, that continue to evolve and our own personal photographic practices. So how can museums and archives get ready to collect here and now? In our experience from the project, there are different ways of responding to the urgency of collecting, depending on what kind of photographs we wish to collect. We need to set up different collecting initiatives with different outreach methods and engagement methods. And on a basic level, we wish to recommend museums and archives to prepare in the following ways, starting with monitoring. As heritage happens in social media, monitoring more or less on a daily basis is required. The solid understanding of social media, as well as being present in social media channels, is definitely a must for the staff involved. This helps us discover potential partners to collaborate with, or new trends in photographic practices, and also viral events that are expressed through photography in social media. And here you can see a few of them. Um, Open Stockholm, Me Too, Knut Blues, if you are in Swedish, you recognize this. Midsummer. Uh, and other, other uh, expressions where we uh, use photography. Uh, 
the next thing we would recommend is having proper digital infrastructures in place. And this might sign, sound very obvious, of course, but without them, this is, it's difficult to collect and manage social digital photography. It has to be there. At the same time, the infrastructures need to be manageable by regular staff and not depending on technical expertise for every step. Collecting interfaces need to be a natural part of collection management systems. We have so far been looking at separate, uh, separate services for collecting, but museums are starting to look at enhancing collection management systems to open up for participation on a deeper level. <clears throat> now most museums and archives, we do already have digital repositories, and in our project we are starting to look at how these uh, existing da databases can fit the metadata that we are collecting and how these images can fit into our existing collection databases. Uh, we are also looking at what kind of metadata we should add as staff. And as you all know, if you worked with photography collections, we have uh, always added metadata to digitized photography. But should we do that with the photographs that we collect? Um, and just as relevant digital infrastructures need to be in place, a user-friendly interface for contributing with photos is central. And again, this might sound very obvious, but a challenge for museums and archives that have to face the expectations of users that might be buying their tickets online, they might be looking for recipes online, or they might be buying a home online, and all these uh, websites are made by companies with larger budgets than museums and my, maybe also larger, better experience of creating user interfaces. Uh, another advice from us today is that the museum or archive should build on solid collaboration, both internally and externally, for rapid response collection, collecting and long-term collecting initiatives. And these collect collaborations are uh, required to be able to perform successful outreach and to further build on competence, drawing from shared experiences. So both work together with other museums and archives, collaborate with communities in order to build trust and reach out, and collaborate internally, break the silos, as you have probably heard many times. Su successful outreach is a must. Uh, it's a pre prerequisite to successful collecting initiatives. and. Um, Depending on what you wish to collect, you need to apply different strategies. And again, uh, it requires internal cross-collaboration and mandate. And here are a few examples of how we have reached out in the case of viral events. We have used uh, sponsored social media posts to collect, for example, images uh, from Knut Blues or the terrorist attack in Stockholm uh, in 2017. Above all, to collect, we need to build trust. Audiences must feel safe uploading images to us. And besides trust, trust, if there is anything you need to consider, regardless of what kind of digital project you are planning, you need to answer the question of what's in it for me. Why should I upload my photos to the museum or to the archive? Responding to this question is, of course, one of our greatest challenges. And I would love to discuss this further with you. Uh, during this day. So, uh, as we have mentioned earlier, a digital tour for collecting images is necessary. It's a necessary starting point uh, for any initiative. This is why we are now developing a prototype that in a year will be available to download on GitHub and to use for free. And here you will also get a sneak peek. It hasn't been released yet, but um, we will give you some screenshots. So why are we developing this web app? We, again, we need a tool to collect. We are, in a sense, sharing the workload then with the audiences, with the contributors who do the uploading and who describe the images. And with this tool, we will make the photos available immediately, which provides incitements to contribute. It is about facilitating participation at the most basic level. There are both the County Museum and Nordic Museum, we already have websites for collecting, and now you might ask, why are we, aren't we just simply using existing websites? We have done so, uh, we have used the website successfully in the project, but as you have heard from, uh, among others, Dave Patton yesterday, we need to experiment to innovate. Uh, and the, in this case, we are experimenting around how we can lower the threshold for participation even further, how we can make this about the images and how social media is affecting what we need to collect and how we can further engage people to contribute. 
uh, we are uh, addressing the changing needs of the audience uh, who are above all taking photos with their mobile phones and this is where they would like to upload images as well and the, um, the audiences uh, would like to upload on their terms when they want to. They want to tell their stories and have personal experiences. Uh, and what we would like to create is also a social context where I can see my photos together with other people's photos. We have been looking at Nina Simon's levels of participation. What we are doing with the web is that we uh, facilitate the contribution of um, photography to heritage collections, but we, what we would not like to do in the next step is to uh, explore how we can collaborate around collecting initiative, how we can co-produce collecting initiatives, and in the long run, let communities, communities initiate and run the collecting initiatives themselves. Um, so a web app doesn't do the work, of course, uh, by itself. Uh, we do recommend complementary methods, um, observation, interviews, photo documentation, collection of objects, service, successful outreach initiatives, of course, and we are also experimenting around how we can bring together the collecting initiatives and the dissemination. Why not have an exhibition where people can upload images in the exhibition and it becomes an experience? So here we have um, some uh, screenshots of the upcoming web app. And if you are interested in hearing more about this and perhaps try it out, please get in touch with us. Just really briefly, I will show some uh, examples of image recognition. And this is a feature that we would like to add to the web app. We, we won't, won't have the time or the money to do it, but we are experimenting parallel to developing the web app. And why are we doing this? Because we are potentially looking at large amount of photographs that museums and archives will collect, and we don't have staff resources, to, we don't have the resources to document in detail each image. Uh, but is it ready to be used? Is, uh, we have a PhD student in Leeds, Aaron Rees, who is brilliant, he's helping us out with doing some testing, and we'll see the results in a couple of months. So I'll just jump ahead here. Um, we've tried a few images. There are free services online, like the Google Cloud Vision. Uh, and very easily it can detect it's a meal, it suggests it's breakfast, maybe brunch, it's food, etc. So some of these words are really useful to keep as metadata. When we uploaded an image from the Stockholm terrorist attack, um, it says flowers, plant, flora, tree, spring, etc. But it doesn't recognize that this is a serious event. It's in fact a memorial site. But for a photo like this, uh, it recognizes toddler, play, child, room, floor, toys, uh, products, infants, etc. And there are words here that we would like to keep unless the photographer themselves have already um, described the image uh, very well. So uh, having this as an option is something we would like to experiment with, that when you upload the photo, um, Retrieving, uh, running the image through an image recognition service and retrieving metadata would be very interesting for museums. But we're not really there yet. We're looking at some development in the upcoming year. So just briefly now, what's next? We will do some further text testing of the web app. We have a conference uh, in March. I think it's around the 20th of March. So we'll uh, let you know when that is. And please mark that in your calendars. And we are writing an anthology and a project report to in detail share our experiences from this project. And again, the web app will be released on GitHub in uh, March next year. Thank you. Thank you so much. So time is up, but I'm sure you will be approachable during the coffee break if anyone has questions. So thank you so thank much. You. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. So now it's coffee and we'll meet back here again at 10.30. Thank you.